For the chicken parmesan dish that I'm going to be making, you need breadcrumbs to coat the chicken. So what better use than to have stale or end bits of the bread to use as the breadcrumbs. So I am going to, okay, I don't really need this. So the thing is, is to try to crumple it into like small pieces so that the food processor doesn't really have to do too much work. So I always like to season everything that I do. So I have some oregano. Let's put some, let's have a little bit of sage. Let's also have some thyme, because who doesn't have time for thyme? <laughs> I know, corny. And obviously, let's have some pepper. This is also a perfect time to be using this new grater of mine with Parmigiano Reggiano. Look how well it cuts. I like it kind of cheesy. <laughs> Do you know why we got this new grater? Because the old one didn't work? Well, that and because it was for the greater good. <laughs> I think that you were saving to use it on this occasion. <laughs> okay, so why don't we grate some more? Because this is going to be used for all that chicken. So it has to have like a good amount of flavor, I think. This is a warning, everyone. Never, ever stick your fingers in there because the blades are very sharp and you could be without a finger. And that's not a good thing. So here are the breadcrumbs I made before. It smells all cheesy and herby and yeah, yummy. <laughs> I am going to use one hand for the dry and then one hand for the wet so that I'm not dirtying all the both hands simultaneously. So this is what I was taught. So you take the chicken breast that I cut so I used um, three chicken breasts but then I'm only using half of them so I have another half left for another meal so chicken breast the flour first let's coat every last side what why don't I coat all of them and now the with eggs. <laughs> this is slipping. So let's try to cover as much of this chicken breast as we can. It's full of flavor. Okay, so I will put it into the oven um, for about 20 minutes at 200 degrees and then I'll bring it out and then we could finish off this dish. Chicken Parmesan consists of a tomato sauce underneath the mozzarella or provolone um, chicken breast. So, my sauce is prepared. It's of a um, canned tomato. I added some 
tomato paste. I add, I also added some basil uh, and some pepper and oregano. So this is lovely and done. The chicken breast that I baked in the oven is all done. So I'm going to add the tomato sauce, put this on top, and then add some mozzarella on top and then pop it into the oven for maybe 20 minutes again. So I'm gonna fill it up. Next, let's put on top the chicken like this. And then let's also add some of this basil that I have. A few more bits of it for flavor. And on top, let's sprinkle some mozzarella. So this is going to be fantastic, don't you think? Um, I'm also going to be serving this along with some pasta. So I have put it into the oven at 200 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. Come back after to see how it turns out. It's ready! Let's see how it turned out. So this is the chicken parmesan. It's gonna be quite hot still. And some of the saucy bits. Wow, look at this. So there is a lovely mozzarella coating on the chicken breast and the tomato sauce looks divine and it's a good accompaniment with this fusilli pasta. So let's, so let's have a bite. Chicken is perfectly cooked and Wow. Nice and tender and you could taste all the herbs and all the basil. So yeah, this is absolutely amazing. Thank you for watching our show today. If you like what you see, then please like, comment and subscribe. Keep watching. Okay, so you need an iron, the clothes that you want to iron. So I'm also using ironing water because the water we have here is too hard. Meaning, um, so yes, if you use water, it will basically gunk up the iron and it will screw it up eventually. You could use distilled water, you could use rain water. Someone we know also uses the water from the dehumidifier, which is another option. So why don't I show you how to do it nice and easy. I promise I, I won't take too long. So I need to turn on the power first. It's on red. 
So I was taught to first iron the collar first. After the collar, I would iron this part. That's how my mom taught me how to do it. So I would place it like this. There's a method to the madness. Then I would iron the spine first and then iron each side as we go along, making sure that it's on super hot so that it will make the most amount of impact. And then I iron this side and then also this side of the shirt. After I'm done with that, then I iron all of the back side. Okay, I am going to iron each side of the front of the shirt now. The bits that were not ironed before. So this is 40% polyester and 60% cotton. If it was 100% cotton, it would be a lot more wrinkly. That's why I don't really like to buy cotton because it basically makes it a lot more difficult to iron. So that's why it's good to have polyester. So no looking down on the people that like polyester, okay? Because it is a much easier fabric to iron. Okay, so I need to iron this side now. The next part is to iron each of the sleeves. And I only iron it the one way. So I'm not gonna iron um, both sides. So I so I just iron the front of the like the front side. I don't really iron the back side. And there you have it, a nice iron shirt. It's all done now. What else am I doing now? More ironing? <laughs>